pharmacological or laser or surgical treatment should be tailored for every patient with diabetes, depending on their eye condition. Anti-VEGF therapy is now uh, the mainstay and almost standard of care for uh, most patients with diabetes. Uh, in fact, the FDA recently approved the use of anti-VEGF medications for all forms of diabetic retinopathy. For patients with diabetic macular edema uh, that is affecting vision, uh, it depends on the vision. Uh, for some patients who see very well, such as 2020 or 2025 vision, they may be observed. And if they are observed, I typically follow them very closely uh, with diagnostic testing, such as an OCT, uh, perhaps every three months. For patients whose vision has dropped to, say, 2040 with diabetic macular edema, uh, the guidelines suggest that prompt anti-VEGF therapy would be warranted. For patients with more severe diabetic retinopathy, uh, with no macular edema, uh, they may be watched, or it's, it's reasonable to treat those to reverse the diabetic retinopathy. In fact, there are several studies which have shown that continuous treatment with anti-VEGF therapy has actually improved the diabetic retinopathy severity score. For patients with proliferative disease, uh, I often treat patients with either anti-VEGF therapy or panretinal photocoagulation. Panretinal photocoagulation is the standard of care because the laser treatment targets areas of uh, ischemic retina in the periphery and can also reverse the disease. However, there are new studies that show that uh, treatment with anti-VEGF therapy may be just as good as panretinal photocoagulation, and it can also uh, reduce the risk of the complications from uh, laser treatment by reducing the risk of night vision loss and visual field loss. Now, for any patient with diabetic macular edema and proliferative diabetic retinopathy, the guidelines suggest that prompt anti-VEGF therapy uh, is favorable. For patients who have uh, vitreous hemorrhage, which may preclude treatment of the retina, there are several options. One option is to treat with anti-VEGF therapy to make the neovascular blood vessels shrink and the bleeding can clear on its own. For patients for, with persistent non-clearing vitreous hemorrhages, surgical uh, options uh, do exist. Uh, vitrectomy surgery is wonderful at clearing out that vitreous hemorrhage, allowing us to uh, perform panorama photocoagulation. We have many treatment options in handling patients with diabetic eye disease. Ideally, we try to treat these patients before they have significant symptoms and we can prevent the need for more aggressive therapies. We usually start treating patients with these anti-VEGF injections that have recently hit the market in the last five years. Multiple studies have shown the benefit in patients not only to reduce their risk of vision loss, but actually to reduce the severity of diabetic retinopathy in their eyes. Previously, with laser treatments that used to be the standard of care, we could never really reverse the severity of the diabetic retinopathy. All we could do was treat the causes of vision loss. Well, now we're able to not only treat the causes of vision loss, but we're able to actually reverse the degree of severity, making it less likely patients will need further treatment. If patients have advanced disease due to diabetic traction retinal detachment, which is when the proliferative diabetic retinopathy, that form of disease where abnormal blood vessels start growing in the back of the eye. Those abnormal blood vessels bleed and scar, and that scarring can lead to what's called traction retinal attachments, where the retina is actually being pulled off the eye wall due to the scar tissue. That is treated with surgery. That's advanced disease, but thankfully we do have surgical techniques called diabetic vitrectomy where we're able to help most of those patients. In clearly and severely advanced cases where patients show up to us with limited vision and severe traction retinal detachments, it's much more difficult to regain some of their vision. But the whole goal of treatment is to prevent patients from ever getting to that stage. And if they get timely intervention, we can prevent them from getting there. Over the years since the introduction of anti-VEGF injections, the rate in which patients need Diabetic vitrectomy or surgery has gone down quite dramatically because those injections prevent them from ever reaching that stage. That's why it's so important that these patients be screened in a timely fashion because we can prevent vision loss, 
and really ultimately reduce the cost of caring for these folks, not only the medical costs, but also all the indirect costs that come from impaired vision, whether it being paying disability, paying uh, unemployment, whatever it might 